finish the regular season on a three-game winning streak. Alamo Bowl, number 15, Oregon, number 11, TCU at 645. The Ducks, they finished their year on a six-game win streak and scored over 40 points four times during that stretch. Oregon and TCU are playing for the third time and first since 1978. And the Motel 6 Cactus Bowl at the Nightcapper, West Virginia, and Arizona State at 1015. Packers and Vikings game moved to Sunday night. It was flexed out with the NFC North Division crown on the line. Head coach Mike McCarthy knows how his team can win. January football, Lambeau Field on Sunday night. So, I mean, the handling of the football will be critical. It's always critical to the success of the game in, in all three phases. And we definitely got to handle it better on offense. And uh, we definitely got to handle it on special teams. And we got to take it away. And, and then the placement of the football, whether we're throwing it, kicking it, punting it, will be uh, another key element of the game. And a quick check into basketball as number 19 West Virginia trails Kansas State 34 to 33 at the half. Also at the half, it's Georgia Tech leading number seven North Carolina 42 to 39. Still to come in just a few moments, number nine Butler and number six Xavier and Syracuse on the road taking on Miami. Miami 11 and one on the season, number 13 in America. Michigan State for the first time since their loss will play Minnesota. Michigan State is 13-1. and one. Continue to listen to NBC Sports Radio on your local station and online. I'm Keith Irizarry. This is KCAA. Saturday, 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 Saturday. I know it used to be Sunday, but the point here is Saturdays don't need to be spent at the swap meet or driving around looking for garage sales because BuySellMakeOffer.com is set to launch January 15th. Circle that date, January 15th, because that's the day the revolution begins. Go there right now, BuySellMakeOffer.com. Type in your email address and we'll make sure you'll be up to date on the goings on at our new and exciting way to sell your stuff online. From clothing to cups, from holograms to your home, anything, with no items fees whatsoever. Make a video of your product to sell it faster. Use Skype to meet your buyer before the transaction is finalized. Everything about BuySellMakeOffer.com is new. Nothing like it has ever been done before. Forget the other guys. Move over to BuySellMakeOffer.com. BuySellMakeOffer.com. Oh, and tell a friend. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. For this morning, we'll have a mainly clear sky, mostly sunny through the day today with a high of 66. Partly cloudy tonight, low 40. Times of clouds and sunshine Sunday with an isolated sprinkle, high 66. Cloudy Monday could see a shower, high 64. Then cloudy with a steady widespread rain on Tuesday, high 60. Rain is likely Wednesday as well with a high of 58. So the chance of some rain Thursday, times of clouds and sun, high 58. That's your weather forecast of this hour from KCAA, 106.5 FM and 1050 AM. The stations that leave no listener behind. Hey, Di, do you know that many people have no idea that the Carousel Mall is actually open? What? Do you tell them that that's where KCAA is located? Of course, but there's more than just KCAA here. Oh, I know. It's a totally great place for a girls' outing. Here at the Carousel Mall, there's Mega Beauty Supply. And it's huge. Yeah, the biggest beauty supply store I've ever seen. And they have wigs and extensions. Then there's Backstreet Beauty Salon and Daniel's Jewelers, a store, by the way, for girls' and guys. Yes, and nail fashions where they do waxing and eyelash extensions. There's Lisa's threading. You know, Mark, eyebrow threading is a big thing nowadays. I do know about Mr. (laughs) Yu's. Yes, when you're ready for lunch, it's Mr. Yu's Chinese restaurant. Mm Mm-mm, best of all, Mr. Yu's is right next to KCAA. Yes, all this located in the Carousel Mall, right off the 215, the 2nd and 3rd Street exit. Come visit the Carousel Mall. We're open. For more info, go to kcaaradio.com. K-C-A-A. Si usted está tratando de evitar que su casa sea hipotecada, usted necesita al Grupo Legal Goodman. El Grupo Legal Goodman consta de una red nacional de abogados, expertos en hipotecas capacitados 
para representarle durante el proceso de mitigación de su hipoteca. La firma legal Goodman ha resuelto casos difíciles de hipoteca en toda la nación. Tome el control de su situación hipotecaria hoy mismo. Llame ya. 888-800-6030 o contacte al grupo legal Goodman en línea arnoldgoodmanlaw.com. If you're trying to prevent a home foreclosure, you need the Goodman Law Firm on your side. Goodman has a nationwide network of foreclosure attorneys to represent you during the mortgage mitigation process. The Goodman Firm has resolved troubled mortgages across the nation. Take control of your mortgage situation today. Call the Goodman Law Firm, 888-800-6030, or contact them online at www.arnoldgoodmanlaw.com. Hey there, sports fans. Chab Dog here. You have tuned into one of the best shows on the air for all of your up-to-date sports coverage and news. You haven't laughed so hard and been informed so much until you've heard it from the mouth of the sports expert himself, El Chab Dog. All right, welcome back to another edition of Chap Dog Sports Talk, the weekly sports talk show covering the professional sports, uh, major sports, and college sports. Brought to you by Chabner, uh, Chab Dog Sports Blog for your headier sports headlines and by uh, the Arnold Goodman Law Firm. Mortgage Mitigation Legal Services, this is a great firm. I've seen their results if you're having mortgage-related problems. Um, you should definitely think about calling them. Uh, and by the Chabner Law Firm, providing transactional legal services for Southern California. And uh, we cover a wide variety of uh, different types of businesses. Uh, I've been practicing for since I don't know how long. I mean, since uh, 1995 uh, when I started doing corporate law. And um, so uh, definitely let, let me know if I can help you in that regard. Uh, we've got a great show. Mike Patterson, are you there? Morning. Let's bring Mike in with a little little special Mike music. This is what you get when you leave the studio. You get to, to be serenaded with Rush. Yeah, my favorite band. I know that. And uh, so you're in the limelight as the first guest on Chab Dog Sports Talk, calling me that in. Thank you very much. I know you have a... A lot of celebrating and good food to eat today, but we—I was—I was in a mindset that we were done with bowl season, except for the, the the final game after what happened yesterday. And now I find we have four more delicious bowls to enjoy. Yeah, I don't know about delicious. I mean, there's one matchup that looks interesting: Oregon and TCU, um, Georgia, Penn State, maybe. But uh, can the uh, Big Ten salvage? It's, it's, it's winding down for sure. Yeah, the Big Ten was just murderized. I mean, <laughs> except for Wisconsin, they came through against USC. Did you see that game? I did not, but uh, you gotta, you can't. Well, but you know, remember my Wolverines. They oh. did a pretty good job against Florida. Oh, that's right, Michigan. Yeah, they uh, they went in there, and the, the the Gator the Gator offense has been non-existent yeah I ever mean, since their number one quarterback got hurt they've kind of the last three or four weeks been smoking mirrors yeah so nice to see michigan finish well they really should have won that michigan state game and and michigan state was kind of exposed in that final game it's just yep. they you know their, their defense was always good enough to, to let them hang around except in this game it looked like uh coker was just on fire he was he was he think he was it's just a real high completion percentage yeah, and I don't. I don't know what Iowa was thinking. You know how you don't have somebody spying on McCaffrey the entire game. You just tore it up. Yeah, Iowa. Oh, got a black eye. They. I don't know if they should be allowed back in the Rose Bowl until they pass an evaluation. That was the the Stanford. Uh, you know they just they they were just excellent the entire year, ex pretty much except for uh, you know that stumble against Northwestern. Who lost it to right. Tennessee? God, right. that was that was kind of shocking. The way the Volunteers stepped up, the whole SEC yep. is just um, 
reestablished itself as the, the uh, without question, the dominant conference. And I mean, people, I think, knew that, but uh, in the back of their mind, but sometimes doubt creeps in when you see some, some things happen over the course of a year, but. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody's bagging on the Big Ten, but, you know, um, Ohio State, Michigan, you know, they had, they had a couple of good games. And you had the, the ones that exposed them with uh, Michigan State and Iowa. So. Mm-hmm. And what do you think? And, and Stanford, you know, obviously they had a, a good year. Um, you know, McCaffrey was in the Heisman conversation. But if you're the Iowa defensive coordinator, how do you not game plan against their number one attack vehicle the first play of the game the guy goes 80 yards untouched. yeah yeah you have to have so, a basically some kind of a spy he, yeah. he's not a quarterback but you, you that's that's their big weapon and uh, the, but i think this stanford through the year has just yeah they've ridden his coattails but they've they're they're just solid all the way around and it's too bad they got left out of the, the playoff uh but there's somebody always gets gets that that uh you know that Number short end of the spot. stick. So, in uh, we'll talk more f- pro football uh, later in the show. Um, sure. Cause we've got some guests that, that like that. Uh, I wanted to know: Did you pay attention to uh, what the Dodgers did in the last week? No, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, you because know, uh, they they well maybe was, I know they acquired Casimir, so now they have a, a left-handed staff starters, which is unusual. Uh, yep. But they did pick up somebody from Japan who is apparently the top Japanese pitcher. Uh, his name is Ma- Maeda. So yeah, they've, they've, they've gone down that road before. Um, so, you know. They need more hitting. They need proven entity in, the, in, in professional baseball. But, you know, there have been others that been, have been successful. So. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I don't know. They may be setting, them, setting up some kind of a trade uh, to get more hitting with some of this pitching they're acquiring. Uh, I think they need a lot of help there. Uh, the Yankees got Chapman, which was, um, you know, it's going to obviously help them. And then uh, the well, ba- not obviously yeah. because he won't be eligible to play for the first oh. three months of the year. Oh, I forgot because of his uh, his suspension, his, his his indiscretion, if you will. Yeah. Well, uh, so over the long that, term, that, it's, it's that just good. goes that just goes to prove you that some teams don't care what you do off the field. Uh, as long as you can uh, do well on the field, uh, we'll pay you. Yeah, I have a problem with that. Yeah, uh, that's that's always been that's always been a conflict. Uh, you know, and it, it's been a moral dilemma for people involved with sports. Well, going back to because we've had bad actors. Too. You know, we've had bad actors throughout history who have been the yep. best players in their sport. Well, and, and, you know, I, I don't want to revert too far back, but uh, let's go back to the college bowl season. How many teams had to send home players because of rules violations? Uh, team, yeah, and look, team what's hap- look what happened with TCU. That's that's obviously. Yeah, I mean, their starting quarterback gets arrested. He, he's, he's in his room for 11 o'clock curfew check, and then he gets arrested after 2 o'clock at a bar. Yeah, that's just poor. That's just poor decision making there. Decision making. I, I get, can you blame the team maybe for not doing enough to keep tabs on people? Um, no, I mean you, you're an adult at that point, and you make decisions. You know, yeah. I, I I understand. I was a college kid, and you know, it's always fun to you know, hey, they're in a different city. They want to be able to go out and, and have a good time, but you know, you got a game in two days. Well, okay, you're putting yourself above the team and not, you know, yeah. doing what you're supposed to be doing. The, yeah. the, the team can't do any more than just, you know, okay, we got an 11 o'clock curfew. We're going to do a, a check. And if you're in your room at 11 o'clock, we assume that you're in for the night. This isn't pro sports where you can go out and party the night before the big game and be a hero the next day. It's, ha- it's happened throughout history. Look at the Super Bowl, Max McGee. I don't know if McGee was like that, but I heard he was – kind of hung over when he was well, doing well, who, well. who was the guy on the on the Cincinnati Bengals um I want to say 1989 the running back Icky uh, Woods was, Icky Woods yeah Icky Shuffle yeah, I mean he didn't even get to play in the game because he was all messed up yeah well Babe Ruth was messed up for a lot of games and he still did what he did 
Yeah, Babe Ruth, you know, it's legendary. He'd be all hung over and he'd eat a couple hot dogs on the bench and go out and hit a home run. So, Mike, uh, you know, also the uh, Negro League Baseball Museum is something in Kansas City you should see right before we go to break. I just want to remind uh-huh. you of that. It's, it was a wonderful place, a lot of great stories, history, and videos. And uh, they told us about oh, absolutely. how. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I went on the website and, and proved it a little bit. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm reading a book right now. Um, Willie Mays, The Life, The Legend, yeah. by a gentleman, uh, James Kirsch, who used to be a writer for the uh, New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. And uh, the first few chapters delve into a lot of uh, the Negro Leagues and, you know, yeah. Willie, uh, his time playing in the Negro League. So I'm very interested in that. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to go to our break. We'll be right back with our first guest, Carlos Silva, CEO of the MMA. Check out my sports blog, your home for heady ear sports headlines. At Chab Dog, we cover the world of sports, from NFL to competitive eating. At our blog, you'll also find Chab Dog's own brand of uniquely original blogcasts for the major sports events. We hit home runs with our coverage. We also have a reading room where you'll find interviews running across the sporting spectrum, along with our vote questions, our Chab Dog Nostications, and of course, our much beloved Chab Dog of the Month. What you can count on from Chab Dog is our stretching the playing field envelope to find the humor, irony, and weird connections that are always living beneath the surface of the sporting world. Check us out at ChabDog.com. The Law Office of Brandon S. Chabner, serving clients in Southern California with transactional legal services since 2007. We handle general corporate outside counsel type work drafting and negotiating a wide variety of business and commercial contracts, including non-disclosure agreements, independent contractor agreements, and employment agreements. Our experience includes working with public and private companies and involves a broad range of industries, including healthcare, consumer products, real estate, and high technology. Mr. Chavner has over 20 years of legal experience, having worked for some larger national firms and serving as general counsel for a multi-million dollar private company here in Southern California before starting his own legal practice. His educational credentials include a law degree from UCLA, where he was on law review, undergraduate degree at Yale, where he graduated magna cum laude, and an MBA from Harvard Business School. Other areas of focus for Chabner Law include press release and business plan editing, pre-litigation matters, and debt and mortgage resolution work. You can contact us at 310-698-0740, and at bchavner at chavnerlaw.com. E-Digits. Lock them in for more information, recreation, and guaranteed fun. KCAA. Okay, welcome back to uh, Chab Doc Sports Talk. You can hear us on uh, AM... 1050 and FM 106.5 KCAA. All right, I want to uh, bring in our first guest, a second guest, uh, a friend of mine from the high school days back in Potomac, Maryland, Carlos Silva. And uh, Carlos, nice to talk to you. Carlos, there. Yeah. Brandon, hey. How you doing? Hey. I welcome you in with some. Uh, Music from the 1980s, the early 80s, when we were playing tennis for uh, Churchill. <laughs> How you said, doing? I'm great. All right, Joe, you can turn it down. Yeah, uh, yeah. You uh, did you go on to play a lot of tennis at Boston College? I did. Yeah, I played four years there. Um, won a bunch of Big East championships, and then I went and tried the mini tours up in Canada after uh, after college. Yeah, earn my earn myself a a couple of pro pro dollars, not very many, but a few. At least well, I can say I did. That's that's darn hard to do, and um, <laughs> I, I I applaud you for being able to do that. I only my career where I won something. I did win five hundred dollars playing something called the Baltimore Open, which I'm sure you overlooked because there, you have bigger tournaments. You but uh, <laughs> I, I had a I had a little bit of a of experience but nothing like yours you were so fast on the court i loved watching you play that's the, the opponents did not have much time on their hands when they were playing you and uh <laughs> there you did you keep that style through your whole career where you're were, you're were coming to the net all the time i did yeah pretty much yeah throughout college and won a bunch of doubles championships probably because i was 
uh, good serve and volleyer. Yeah, yeah. And do you, and now what do you do? Do you play mostly tennis, or do you do other things to stay in shape? Uh, no, I'm a big. Um, I, I play from time to time. Sort of, you know, as we get older, we can only get worse and worse at tennis. But I'm a big triathlete now, and I'm pretty much running and biking and swimming all the time. And um, yeah. been uh, done a, f- a couple of uh, a couple of Ironman. I'm and sure, some you, big, and yeah. some big ones. So yeah. yeah, you must be you must be really good. Uh, I I just wish you keep that rivalry going with Steve Gittleson because you guys <laughs> you guys have some classic matches. He's we he's, did. Th- he's there. You could play him any any time. I yeah, he is around. He is around town. I uh, I hear from him from time to time. I think he's doing well. Yeah. Well, we uh, yeah we could talk Churchill tennis all all day here, but um, you're doing some very interesting things. How did you get into uh, MMA and the World Series of Fighting? Uh, I mean, it's because you 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 don't do martial arts yourself, right? No, I don't. I, I actually uh, a couple of the board members uh, over the summer. I was looking for some new um, new opportunities, and I got a phone call from a buddy of mine who's one of my board members, uh, Mike Stevens, who's the uh, chief marketing officer of the New York Giants. And uh, he told me he was uh, he had just joined the board, and he was looking looking for some uh, some new leadership and. Um, I just uh, I got to know the owners. I got to know the other board members. I had uh, I had been, you know, sort of in and around sort of the big sports with my background running AOL Sports back in the day, and and knew UFC and Bellator and and uh, and sort of the crazy growth that they've um, that they've enjoyed over the last ten or fifteen years. And uh, it seemed like World Series of Fighting was a bit of a turnaround, and we had a great partner in NBC, and so. Uh, so I decided to jump in head first and, and join the team as a CEO and try to bring some media and technology uh, to the to the team that that really was a fighting team and a great a great event team, but they didn't really have a lot of media media background. And so having run having run a bunch of television networks and launched television networks, I thought that uh, my media background might be able to help. So so far so good. We're having a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's how does it relate to the UFC? Is 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 there any direct relationship? No direct relationship. I mean, you know, the UFC is really, uh, you know, a little bit like the NFL. Uh, they're the biggest and the baddest, and they've been around the longest, and um, they do a great job. Um, and they're on they're on Fox and Fox Sports One uh, and pay per view, and then Bellator is uh, is also one of the major. Uh, major leagues, and they're uh, they're currently on Spike and actually owned by Viacom, and uh, and we're partnered up with NBC and show all of our fights on NBC and NBC Sports Network. So, you know, really just um, just another one of the leagues um, and trying to draft off of the success a bit of UFC and Bellator, honestly. Uh huh. And are the rules the same in your sport as they are in UFC? They sports? are the same. Yeah, same unified rules. Um, I think that's one of the things that maybe. Uh, maybe the casual fan doesn't, you know, doesn't understand so much as, as to how the rules have really, you know, brought the sport to a different level over the last five, ten years. Um, I think, you know, some of the casual fans think it's really just two guys, you know, getting into a cage and, you know, pretty much anything, anything goes. And that's not the case. You know, there's there's rules and regulations, and keeping the fighters safe is really important. And mm-hmm. I think the, you know, the referees do an amazing job of jumping in and, and ending fights. Um, when they need to, and so that makes them. Um, that I think it's made a big difference um, to the sport. A big difference. Yeah, and uh, you guys, t- if somebody wants to see a, an MMA fight, they they just it's a pay per view situation. You just have to. It's easy to find. Is uh, can you not explain? on not in World Series of Fighting? World oh. Series of Fighting is all free. So we're um, we oh that's right. It's on fight. NBC. Yeah, we show our fights on NBC Sports Network and then, uh-huh. uh, and and NBC a couple times a year. And so, actually, our next fight is in Memphis. It's uh, WSOF 27 uh, on January 23rd, and that'll be live on NBC Sports Network. Yeah, I saw that was a light heavy, a couple of light heavyweights. Uh, or li- yep. he- li- yeah, so that'll be good. And yeah, local the- guy Terry Holder is going to be fighting, which is exciting because he's from uh, from right around that area. And then you have uh, last looked like last year you had like uh, how many? Twenty events, fifteen events. Yeah, we, we we have anywhere from uh, from twelve to fifteen events a year. Uh, we just had we just had an event, WSOF twenty six, where uh, Lance Palmer 
uh, was uh, defending and got his uh, got his belt taken away from him um, by Almeida. Uh, that was in Co- that was at Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas a couple weeks ago, and then we're going to be in Memphis in January. Another event in February, March, pretty mm. much uh, one a month for the for the the balance of 2016. And how many people are at a typical event? Oh, we have anywhere from uh, three to five thousand at an event live in the stadium, and then uh, and then. Obviously, you know, hundreds of thousands live on NBC Sports Network. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sure you're, as CEO, you're you're going after people not only through uh, the, you know, the NBC channel, but also uh, through, uh, you know, the internet and mobile devices. And uh, yeah, I think that that was really the reason that I joined. I mean, um, I, it, I felt like they had put together a really nice event fighting company, but. They hadn't really built a media platform, so you know that's really what I told the owners that I wanted to come in and, mm-hmm. and really build the audience every day. I'm, you know, as I mentioned, I'm a big fitness and endurance guy too, and I really kind of I really look at our fighters more as athletes than I do as fighters. I mean, they're they're amazing, uh, they're amazing endurance athletes. Mm-hmm. And the, yeah, the, the training things. camp, the training camps that they go through for 30 days, getting ready for fight. You know, how do you train like a champion and and sort of be with with our fighters and athletes on a day-to-day basis and get to know them and see what they're eating and how they're training and what they're doing um, is probably, you know, even more important than than the fight. And so that's really a lot of what we're building up um, at World Series of Fighting. Yeah, and then, you know, just getting the story out, and that's what why I love watching this stuff because the, the athletes are so amazing, the things they can do in there. Yeah, uh, yeah, they really – the way that uh, the way that they spin and jump and kick and and strike and and you know and if anyone's ever been in any kind of a fighting situation to understand how hard it is to you know even go one round for five minutes when you, you've got two great you know great fighters I mean it is it is tough endurance stuff and these guys sometimes go two three four in the case of a title fight they go five five minute rounds so it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty intense from an endurance standpoint. Is there any uh, thing where you've organized a, a, an exhibition against the UFC, where the MMA guys go against the UFC guys? No, we we uh, you know really right now the leagues all fight amongst themselves for their own titles and their own weight class belts. Uh, the UFC, Bellator, World Series of Fighting, you know, all does that. But um, you know, we have talked about it. I think there could be some interest. Yeah, it seemed like it uh, might make sense. In that. Yeah, to just grow the pie, you know, sure. be, be collectively there. Mike, uh, Mike Patterson, you there? I am here. Yeah, yeah why don't I, you? Yeah, uh, I had a couple questions, yeah. and I, I think you just answered one of them. But I was, you know, interested in how a fighter, you know, do they have agents? Do they have managers? Do they? How do they pick your MMA versus you know UFC? They get they get signed they get signed just like athletes in any league they get signed to deals. Uh, generally, um, they get signed to a four fight deal. Uh, they do have managers, um, managers, agents, whatever you want to call them. Generally, in the MMA world, they call themselves managers. And uh-huh. um, and you you know you sign up those fighters for fight one, two, three, and four. And and like any uh, situation, if um, if they you know if they lose all of their fights, generally they. They go. They might go somewhere else, or they might leave the, the promotion. Um, and if they start to win and they become a, a contender, they get re-upped and and stay with the promotion for you know years and years. It really just depends, yeah, I, depends fighter by fighter. Yeah, I, I would think if I lost four fights in a row, I'd rethink my uh, career path. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It, it's sort of you might lose something self- else. <laughs> Yeah, a little self fulfilling, that's for sure. And when are you gonna get uh, are you gonna get women uh, fighting too? You know, we, we have had we've had some women fighting uh, in the past. Uh, we didn't do it we didn't do much of that in the last, you know, six or seven fights, but we are looking at it. I think, you know, some of it is just finding the right talent to bring into the different weight classes. Um, to put it together. But the, yeah, the, having uh, a critical match, mass. You know, Ray, Ray Staffo, who's uh, our uh, former world champion, Hall of Famer, and uh, takes care of all that stuff for us, is, uh, is looking at a number of different um, a number of different women that could fight for us. Absolutely. Yeah. I got some ideas yeah, for you. Yeah. So. What's that? Yeah, I've got a couple of gals that play on the L.A. Uh, female football team that might be able to help you out. Yeah, they're <laughs> good athletes. Know. 
<laughs> I, well, that's why we, yeah, we have to keep talking, and uh, uh, I want to have you back sometime soon. And uh, thank you so much for taking taking time out of your day to be our guest. Anytime, guys. Good talking to you. Have a great day. Okay, we'll be right back with the second half of Chab Dog Sports Talk. Check out my sports blog, your home for head of year sports headlines. At Chab Dog, we cover the world of sports, from NFL to competitive eating. At our blog, you'll also find Chab Dog's own brand of uniquely original blogcasts for the major sports events. We hit home runs with our coverage. We also have a reading room where you'll find interviews running across the sporting spectrum, along with our vote questions, our Chab Dog Nostications, and of course, our much beloved Chab Dog of the Month. What you can count on from Chab Dog is our stretching the playing field envelope to find the humor, irony, and weird connections that are always living beneath the surface of the sporting world. Check us out at chabdog.com. The law office of Brandon S. Chabner, serving clients in Southern California with transactional legal services since 2007. We handle general corporate outside counsel type work, drafting and negotiating a wide variety of business and commercial contracts, including non-disclosure agreements, independent contractor agreements, and employment agreements. Our experience includes working with public and private companies and involves a broad range of industries, including healthcare, consumer products, real estate, and high technology. Mr. Chabner has over 20 years of legal experience, having worked for some larger national firms and serving as general counsel for a multi-million dollar private company here in Southern California before starting his own legal practice. His educational credentials include a law degree from UCLA, where he was on law review, undergraduate degree at Yale, where he graduated magna cum laude, and an MBA from Harvard Business School. Other areas of focus for Chabner Law include press release and business plan editing, pre-litigation matters, and debt and mortgage resolution work. You can contact us at 310-698-0740 and at bchabner at chabnerlaw.com. You're listening to KCAA, your good neighbor along the way. All right, we're back at uh, Chab Dog Sports Talk, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 106.5. Uh, all right, second half of the show. This is going to be good. This is going to be a lot of NFL stuff. And um, it's always a precious minute I have when I have, get to spend it here talking football with Eric Sove. Eric, hello. Hey, Brandon. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year to you. And it's it's time for you to fly out to uh, California to watch the, the, the playoffs here in Los Angeles. We can we can root well, I'm, I'm sure looking forward to being out there watching Divisional Weekend uh, with Chab Dog. Yeah, that's I love the I love the you know early part of the playoffs where you have all those teams going and the different wondering about the different uh, outcomes and there's there's just there's a little bit of you know, more excitement when I think when there's more teams. Uh, in a lot of ways, until of course you get to the Super Bowl. But um, uh, we've got uh, a lot to talk about. I appreciate the help uh, with the headlines last weekend, and uh, I, en- I enjoyed some of them immensely. <laughs> and we do have a lot to do, talk do about. We, do we have we to circle do, back and talk Week 15 here? Yeah, I don't know if we want to. Week 16 before we get to tomorrow. Yeah, I, well, do whatever you want to do. Talk to, talk, talk to me about uh, wherever your mind's going. Well, I just want to, yeah, we, in our limited time, let's just circle back and quickly say back in week 15, uh, we'll think back there, the Steelers beat the Broncos in that great evening game. As I want to just remind everyone about that. I want to remind everyone about the, uh, the my walk, which was the Patriots minus three against the Tennessee Titans. Can you believe the Patriots were only a three point favorite there? At the, that was against the, the Titans? Gift of the year. Yeah, against the Titans in week 15. I can't even believe that. I forgot no. about that. Uh, that whoever set that line was probably had his head taken wow. off. That was uh, <laughs> there was a great gift going on there. That's but sure. uh, the, the the Patriots don't look now now the way they look then. No, no, they don't. Of course, remember the Redskins beat the Bills in that game. I didn't want to jinx them, and so I picked the Bills. But they they beat 
Bills handily back then. That was fantastic. I, I got that you one right. That. I've, I've been, and I've you been had the Giants that. game correct as well. The Panthers beat the Giants, but they didn't cover the spread. Well, that game ended up going into overtime as well. So. And I did. I did. I think I was on the right side of the Denver uh, Cincinnati game. Y- yes. Yes. And then, <laughs> then last week, of course, we had the uh, the Redskins beat Philly mercilessly. I know. The rubber hose. They drubbed. They drubbed Chip, and uh, he's the Philadelphia has oh. now chipless. Now tell me what happened with the Steelers and the Ravens. I was watching that game. I know. I I didn't even get to see that game because I was with uh, at a at an event with my wife's family where everybody was watching the Chiefs hang on against the Browns in an ugly yeah. uh, ugly game. But they kept uh-huh. being these these Steeler highlights being shown to me. And of course, at the end, I, my hopes were were really up there when they had the ball with two minutes left, and they all they needed was a, a freaking field goal. And then yeah. and then they. They just, I just, I hate the way they, they, they forget about the run and they had Mm -hmm. a guy had a hundred yards. D'Angelo Williams had a hundred yards and they didn't run it at all towards the end. They just did these, you know, these passes, hit or miss passes. And uh, of course they gave the ball up on downs and that was it. It's just unbelievable. loss. And that kind of fits that in the next two games we're going to talk about fit into what's going to happen this week in 17. So Raven Steelers, they're in the same division and it's tough to beat the same, beat someone twice, sweep someone in your own division. And, and, of course, last week also, the Falcons beat the undefeated Panthers, both in the NFC South. And the Panthers handily beat the Falcons the first time, but they couldn't do it the second time. And good heavens, the Jets beat the Patriots. The Jets. Could you believe that? So what are you saying, that the uh, Bills can't beat the Jets this week? Because they beat them the first time. Are you there? I can't answer that because yeah. I, I don't. That's a mistake. That's just a pure mistake. I understand how they, they defer on the kickoff, but you never defer in overtime, ever. I don't oh, ever, you're, I, you're talking about. Mike, do you yeah. have any idea? I have no idea why they did that. Well, Bill Belichick has a reason for everything he does. And, of course, he, since he decided to do it, it was the right decision. <laughs> he just I think he just wanted to, to screw Pittsburgh. <laughs> He did a good job too. Game over. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, anyway, talk about what's going to happen this week. I want to know. Okay. Well, let's let's go. Let's take Pittsburgh first because they're going to need some good things to happen here. Pittsburgh is going to have to to win, and they're oh. going to have to beat Cleveland. Well, if they can't beat, that's Cleveland. pretty much a given. That that, that <laughs> always but, happens. But, but the Jets. Jets are going to have to lose, though. Jets are playing Buffalo. I know, and, and that, yeah, that, that's a really crazy close game in terms of you know ESPN has this fifty-two percent Bills, but the Jets yeah. are favored by by two and a half. And the Jets beat Buffalo in Week Ten already, twenty-two seventeen. And what? last year, Buffalo sweep the Jets. Wait, five. didn't didn't Buffalo beat the Jets? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I thought you said the Jets beat Buffalo. So Buffalo's already beaten the Jets. I think there's a delay here on the, the line. Can you hear me, Eric? Yeah, I can hear you, and that's what I'm saying. Since Buffalo's already beaten the Jets once, it's unlikely they're going to beat them again. Right. So that, that, so that doesn't look good. No, that doesn't look good for Pittsburgh's chances. It doesn't right. mean it's not going to happen. But I don't want to disappoint you, but it just that's that's what you're up against there. No, I think I think you know my my hemis are acting up based on what you just said. I, I'm the Steelers are going to break my heart again. Yeah, it's going to be unfortunate. Now, when we flip over to Kansas City, they need a win, and but they're playing Oakland, and they beat Oakland in Week 13 already. So I think they, I think Kansas, yeah, and Oakland's been playing. You know, they won last week in overtime against San Diego. They've been playing pretty good lately. So you're going to um, go with with David Carr and the Oakland Raiders in a big game against Kansas City? Yeah. I'm tempted. That's not the lock of the week, but I'm tempted. Because that but game. I want to put that in. I want to put that in perspective because because Cincinnati. Sorry. So so Cincinnati is also playing Baltimore. Cincinnati beat Baltimore 28-24 back in week three, and of course they're in the same division as well. And Baltimore just got off beating Pittsburgh last week. They might be able to knock off Cincy this week. Uh, and that all relates back to not Denver in not Denver. in Cincy though. In Cincy? Well, yeah, but, but um, the red headed stepchild is still not starting. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But they've got the uh, McCarran child who yeah. 
is is not a bad quarterback. He's pretty serviceable, and and they're playing the against uh, Ryan Mallett, who I yeah. know he beat Pittsburgh. But come on, I gotta go with Cincinnati on that one, uh, just because it mean the game means something to them still. Uh, just like I think Kansas City, it means something to them to beat the Broncos. I mean to beat the uh, Raiders because the Broncos have to beat the Chargers, which you can't assume. I I think the Broncos will win that game, but it's going to be close. Well, the Broncos already yeah. beat the Chargers in Week 13, 17, 3, and I thought that yeah. of the two games, that was the one that they were going to lose. They didn't. So I think actually, ironically, this will be the game that Denver loses. Oh, well, that would be great for Kansas City. Mike, do you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, the, the two games that have ramification in that, uh, in that conference are uh, Denver versus San Diego and Kansas City versus Oakland because if Kansas City yep. wins and Denver loses, then Kansas City wins. Uh, and, and then they get a first round bye. Yeah, that's why it, it just you know it would crush Denver to lose to San Diego if it, so because they worked so hard to get this home field advantage which they really need. So um, I don't know. I just can't put my faith in the Chargers at all. Uh, what about the uh, what about the Vikings Packers game? Uh, well, we'll talk oh. to Stewart about that, but I want to know what you think. Well, that, that's going to be exciting because that's going to determine who plays Washington in uh, in Wild Card Week. Yes, and. Unless I'm Seattle thinking, screws it up, I think they could screw that up. But, uh, well, yeah, and Seattle, yeah, well, Seattle, Arizona, see, Arizona's got to beat Seattle right. in order to keep up with uh, with and with Carolina. I think they Although will. Carolina though. probably won't lose, but who knows? You know, it, it's and if the games at Green Bay, oh, I but Green Bay's just not been on their game lately. I'm I'm thinking, I I'm thinking Minnesota there. I'm thinking Green Minnesota Bay's offensive there. line. Yeah, they're messed Green, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Green, Green Bay's offensive line is not good. Did you see how many times uh, Aaron Rodgers got sacked last game? <laughs> I mean, oh, he was just pounded. The of, and in the middle of the fourth quarter, the coach finally said, "You know what? You've been beaten up enough. We're taking <laughs> you out." <laughs> I, I can see the little Tweety Bird coming out of his helmet when he's walking off the field. Uh, yeah, and, not so much for concussion protocol. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and so that that'll be a really good game. And then, of, of course, you've got you've got some games that mean absolutely nothing to to, to there's they don't mean anything to anybody, and uh, mm-hmm. that it's probably going to be hard to watch things like the uh, Eagles and the Giants, even though that's a yeah. blood that is a blood feud. But who 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 has anything to gain from that one? <laughs> or the Falcons and the Saints, and Atlanta's a four point favorite. Oh exactly. God, who's got nothing to gain there? That, that, what, uh, what are your thoughts in terms of uh, positioning and who might, you know, rest some starters going into the playoffs versus, uh, you know, team, teams that are still playing for home field advantage or, you know, home field throughout, so on? Well, let's look at that. Good good question, Mike. Let's go to that Washington game first. Yes. Uh, so Dallas at home, three-point favorite against the Skins. That's actually my lock of the week. Take the Redskins. Uh, they're playing, you know, they're, they'll, if they lose, they'll be eight and eight, they, but they don't want to lose momentum and they don't want to make the mistakes. The teams like, uh, like the Colts made years ago by resting their starters, Kirk cousins and all the starters are going to show up to play. Um, you know, uh, Jay Gruden, the coach has confirmed that, that he's, he's playing everybody. And maybe, and, yeah, maybe Dallas yeah. wants to lose. So they make, they sure they have the worst record. Precisely. Yeah, this, they're already yeah, winning a game. Another game for Dallas isn't going to make any sense. Uh, winning a game for Washington makes a lot of sense just from a momentum point of view. But, Eric, this rivalry. Um, they, lost the, they lost to Dallas already on that Monday night debacle there. Um, this is, yeah, why why the odds makers have Dallas favored by three years. Is this another gift from, this, from, from Las Vegas here? Yeah, this rivalry makes absolutely no sense. And it, never, it seems like it, you know, things weird things happen. The, the Redskins have won in Dallas a bunch of times in yeah. the last three years. So just just when you think everything's pointing towards them, Dallas will win. But. Um, you, I would guess why I would go with Dallas. <laughs> I think they're going to What do you think about Arizona and Carolina? You think uh, Palmer and uh, and uh, Newton will uh, play, or will they sit? No, the um, Palmer's going to play for Arizona. I've confirmed that. I don't have um, Newton's no, going to play. I Carolina I think. confirmed, but I believe uh, uh, he's got. But I'm disappointed in Arizona. The Honey Badgers out. He got injured there back in uh, oh. I think it was either Week 15 or last week, and he's out for the rest of the season, unfortunately. No, um, Arizona is another one of these teams. They're not going to rest anybody. They, they, you, if you can play, you're, you're going in. We don't, and they don't care. 
Right. They want, well, they want everybody fresh and ready to go. Yeah, that rookie back, uh, Johnson, he's uh, played well the last four weeks. Absolutely. Yeah, he's. he's I like in Arizona. I love Arizona for to go all the way to play in the Super Bowl. Oh well, you heard it right yeah. here, Eric. Yeah. Uh, Sove says the Arizona Cardinals. And who do you like coming yeah. out of the AFC? Uh, well, how, how can it not be New England? <laughs> and, well, you're, you're saying New England? Yep. Oh, what a boring yeah, choice! I, I don't think Cincinnati yep. can go very far if uh, they got to play in the wild card round, and Denver. You know, you've got quarterback situation. I don't know that you can plug Manning in. The yeah. sleeper there is probably Kansas City. Kansas City, but they're, I just I got to go with New England, too. I think they'll get enough rest and uh, they'll get wet, better. Uh, but, it would be KC. Aaron, one final thing, yeah. but, but if, if Pittsburgh gets in, if yes. they want get in, here's my Super Bowl pick, Pittsburgh versus Washington. Yeah, if they get in. But Pittsburgh Re- versus Washington? Re- Rex- yeah, Pittsburgh Re- versus the Redskins. <laughs> that would be my, okay. my dream. Uh well, Eric, I'll, I want to have you back soon because this this is good. We've got some momentum going here with our our picks. So let's we'll talk to you. <laughs> Keep ho- our fingers crossed. Hopefully Let's next week. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll, hey, I'll Mike, be... Merry Christmas or Happy New Year, I mean. Yeah, Happy New happy Year to you. All right, one, we'll we'll be right back. If you haven't been listening to Chab Dog Sports Talk for the last two months, here's a little bit of what you've been missing. The 9-11 show, the first show that I did on Friday night, and this was a special show. All right, let's hear it. Ron Abrams, one of my buds. You're doing great. I, I made it here without the uh, use of the helicopter. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. What fight song are we listening to? What fight song? Sounds like a little Halo Redskins. What else could it be, song? Mike? I mean, at one point in time, the Redskins had one... You can cut the song now. The Redskins have a Achilles heel injury, like it's Sonny Jurgensen style. Yeah. Just, or Billy Kimmler, I forget which Redskin. Uh, I think they both had Achilles heel uh, injuries. But anyway, and I'm writhing on the ground, and what, is, what does Chab Dog do? Get He's up! He's me to get up and finish the game. And so get up, you lazy bum! And, and I, I hadn't even, the pain had not even worn off yet, and it wasn't wearing off. And I was just on the ground. We had a, but we had a burrito on the line, plus the uh, soda machine. Yeah, that's yeah, good. I, think I ended up still buying you the burrito that yeah. night. I, you, I didn't know I knew he was that hurt. For, first of all, that, that's cold, man. That, that, <laughs> oh. that is cold. <laughs> but that's kind. That's the kind of competitor that the chap dog is. So, uh, and you know they're going there. So I don't. I don't understand why. Why you wouldn't blame it on the, uh, the 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 Steelers had problems with their radio headsets. I heard, and the Patriots didn't. So that's no, 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 no. Discussing no. the outdoor game. On, on the Steelers, Steelers Patriots. Patriots. Both teams had problems with their uh, headsets. Oh. Yeah, it's just the, the Steelers talked about it more. Yeah, well, when you lose, you, you complain more, I guess. For more local radio every day, tune into KCAA Loma Linda. All right, we're back for the home stretch. Chab Dog Sports Talk on AM 1050 FM 106.5. Got a final guest here, Stuart Owens. Hey, Stuart, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Yeah. This is how, um, we got a little water related music here. This is from Dire Straits, uh, Water of Love. Uh, and, uh, uh-huh. Let's hope that if you're a Vikings fan, you're hoping Teddy Bridgewater can get it done. I hope. Yeah, I'm he, hoping he can. I am. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's a better player than I. I really I gotta confess, I I didn't follow him that closely when he came into the league, uh, but he's he's getting it done, and he's he's he seems like a smart guy. I like the way he interviews, um, and you know he's he's got a lot of speed. If, I just hope he does. You know, the, you always worry about those running quarterbacks that get hurt. You know, but well, well, the thing that worries me about him is that he's a little, a little too, and maybe it's the way they 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 work in him a little bit too cautious. They, he holds the ball a little bit too long. Um, but I do like him over the past three weeks. Oh, you mean in terms of when he uh, goes back to pass, he 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 holds in the pocket a long time before he throws. He doesn't do. A- he holds the 
he just holds the ball too long. He yeah. really does. He doesn't he doesn't throw it away. And I wish he'd throw it away more often because he takes a lot of sacks. Right. He doesn't have to. Uh, and that's a, obviously, you know, classic way to get hurt is is you're you're sitting there holding the ball, looking for the receivers, and somebody just crunches you. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. That, there's just mm-hmm. it's just a fact. You in the NFL, you just don't have that much time, right? So well, exact, exactly. And in fact, that it, that was cost of the game in uh, along with the turnovers against the uh, Cardinals because we're the one team over over their run that that could have beat them. Right. And we were a better te- we were a better team that day. So that that's what gives me hope in the playoffs, and and and, and really kind of a a a a, a blessing that may be a blessing in disguise. I want us to win like you, like no other, uh, come Sunday. But if we do lose, not only do we may fall into the fifth slot, but if we do fall into the fifth slot, we may even avoid Arizona. So a loss may be the best thing for us, although you don't go that route. You still want to win, and if you have to play Seattle, so be it. Um, uh, um, but, uh, yeah. again, uh, it's, it's, you know, you, you always win. You never, you never think anything because you never know. You never know. Yeah, they want to put their best foot forward and get this uh, monkey off their back that they they can't seem to beat Green Bay. Uh, it's been their record over the last twelve or thirteen games against the Packers is terrible. Well, it's, it's really because they weren't as good a team. They they couldn't step on the field and have the same type of talent level. Now, yeah, but what they happened can. Yeah. Uh, this year? Well, you. you well, this year you had Harrison Smith out, Anthony mm-hmm. Barr was out, you had Linville Jones out. Those are the three best players on their on their defense squad. They were out, yeah. And 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 that and you know you have those three players. Those are the three core right there at all three different at uh, at each level. So I think well we're not going to have Jones is doubtful for this week, um, but Harrison Smith is back and he's probably the hardest and most effective uh, 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 safety in the NFL. He's very underrated, very underrated. Watch it and watch you. You'll see him. He's on you know almost every play. You'll watch him. And Anthony Barr is very very good. He's up and coming as well. So I like our chances better than last time, obviously. Yeah. Plus the Green Bay well, Lions but, maybe not as. Uh, uh, com- you know, good right now. So maybe the offensive line. So maybe you get some sacks. That scares yeah, me when they're not as good. Because that's when that's when <laughs> that's when uh, Rogers comes at his best right now. That scares me. You know, yeah. it really does. Right, Mike Patterson wanted to get his uh, two cents, and he's my co-host, as you know, Mike. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, hey, Mike. I was, All right. I was, I was gonna say, if I was the Minnesota defensive coordinator, I'd be watching last week's game tape because. Uh, Rodgers was on his back, you know, eight times and pressured all over the place. Um, so if they if they can mount any kind of pass rush, I like the Vikings in that game. Let, well, let Adrian what... Peterson, let Adrian Peterson yeah. drown in town and let Teddy Bridgewater just, you know, make some uh, medium throws and, and control the game. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the key is not only to, like you just said, with, with Bridgewater, just to play consistent. Uh, no turnovers, of course, like they did against uh, Cardinals. No turnovers. And if, 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 if AP can get at least 20 carries within the frame of the game, I, I like their chances. But the key right there, Jones is not going to be in there, and that's the push up the middle. If we can get, can get that push up the middle, we're going to get to Rodgers. But that losing Jones this week is going to hurt, hurt big time, really. Yeah, so you're going to have to do blitzes and – Try to create that yeah. pressure, and that's always scary against a guy like Aaron Rodgers. That's scared. I'm scared to death. I, I, Rodgers is still still one of the best. So, uh, the best. so the, the the worst case scenario, I guess, is you guys go in there and lose, and then end up in the sixth position because uh, the you know they the Seattle could win, and uh, that could I think that moves you to six. So you have to go back to Green Bay to play again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Seattle, I don't think Seattle wins. I don't I, yeah. even if they they're supposedly not going to play their their other players. I mean that's what the word is. But uh, oh, so you, Arizona Arizona's not going to lose at home. They're oh, so, not going to lose that momentum. Oh, so you heard that Seattle is possibly not going to really put out. Um, that's that's what some of the word has been that they they're not going to. I mean, if things get a little tough or whatever, you know, they still yeah. want to just, just make sure that they're healthy. I think the key to all this has got to be that that Carolina is going to win because they're playing mm-hmm. uh, they're playing the Buccaneers. I think. Yeah, but at the same time, they they switch the schedule. It's not they're not playing at ten o'clock. They're playing at one o'clock. Uh, uh, oh, so, time. Well, so well, so yeah, Arizona. We you're won't, not going to know. 
but they'll be playing well, no. at the same time, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I, exactly. I don't I'm think glad, I'm glad too. I don't think that they're going to see a score in the middle at like at halftime. I don't think they're going to they're in uh, you know uh, Arizona. They're going to look up and see a score that shows Carolina losing by a lot. Or I think it's going to show it's going to show that Carolina is you know has incentive to win and they will win. So. Yeah, but even, even if even if Carolina is playing an early morning game, uh, I don't think Arizona wants to. Uh, I think they want to keep the. Uh, that's that okay. The middle. So they, you you know, guys really do. you guys will probably worst be five, and then you'll play the Redskins in in Washington uh, in that first round. And uh, you know don't 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 sell the Redskins short, even though they they're in a a conference full of slouches. Uh, they're they are pretty they're pretty competent right now. I think. Well, I think I'm a, I'm a quick it to you. I picked the Redskins. <laughs> to be honest, I, it's just, I mean, I'm just being honest. I'm going to pick a team. Yeah, they, I'm, not, I'm not putting the Redskins down, but I'm going to pick a team. I picked the Redskins. I think they played in the playoffs a while ago. Uh, it was I'm not sure if it was the '90s or the '80s, uh, but I remember. I think it was the '90s when they played Tommy Kramer's team. Uh, yeah, and they, and they lost. They played in Minnesota, and they got beat. And that was so. That was Minnesota. the year that that uh, the Vikings ended up playing the Falcons in the finals of the NFC. That was in 1999, I think. No, 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 no. Was Minnesota it? played uh, St. Louis. Didn't, Min- uh, didn't I mean Arizona? They played the Cardinals. Then they played uh, um, Atlanta. Did, that was in '98. Yeah, '98. Yeah, that was the '98 season. Yeah. That was that was a good game, man. The, uh, the 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 Vikings Atlanta game because I I remember if you're a Vikings fan, it was heartbreaking, wasn't it? Because didn't the Vikings miss a field goal? It was so disappointing because uh, at the uh, well, one give me, missing the field goal and giving up the, the ten points in the fourth quarter, we have they kicked off to us and we had the ball on our own forty yard line with forty seconds left to go and uh, Danny Green uh, kneels on the ball. The most prolific offense in football, at least at that time, kneels on the football with forty seconds left to go. That's Minnesota. That's Minnesota. That's what uh, wait, we do. What, what happened? We, what was the scenario there? I, I, remind me. It was. Well, we, uh, we you know that Atlanta scored ten uh, answer, unanswered points after. Uh, oh, to to tie uh, it up. To tie it up. Right, you know? and so Danny and, Green didn't didn't go for it at the end of the game to try to win it in regulation. Yeah. In regulation, he just kneels on the ball saying, we'll just go and try to win it in overtime. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, He's the God. best personnel. I mean, and Denny Green's the reason that the Cardinals got to the Super Bowl because they used his team when they went to the Super Bowl against the Steelers. Well, he's a great personnel man, but as far as X's and O's, horrible, horrible. Not, yeah. not a great X's and O's coach. That's, that's, that's unforgivable because – the coach has got to make the right decision with the right type of team, and 40 seconds is an eternity. It's especially with that team, the most explosive team. I mean, I mean, that I was a great team. That, team, team. Uh, that, that offense was even better than to me the the, the, the Patriots offense. That was, you have not only you have the running game and the passing game. Oh, that was that was the, that was Randall Cunningham, right? Randall Cunningham, Rand, Robert Smith, Randy, Randy Moss, Moss oh. Chris Carter. Oh my goodness! Robert my goodness. Smith was a great player. Ohio State, great yeah. player, great player. He made the offense because you couldn't play on him. I mean, you have to you have to worry about Robert Smith all the time as well. You just couldn't let uh, 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 rest on Randy and Chris. You have to still worry about Robert Smith. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a it was very very tough offense, very tough offense. Is, I and think Chris Randall kind of this year. That, I think that that team should have gone to the Super Bowl and had a shot at the Broncos. But uh, should have won it. I believe they'd have beat the Broncos. Should have won it. All right. After one year, they should have won it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, well. I mean, uh, yeah, I uh, wish your Vikings luck. I mean, I, I, I don't want to be too biased because there's a lot of uh, fans out there of Green Bay Packers, but uh, I hope the Vikings played up to their potential. If I was in oh, Vegas, oh, I'd be oh, putting okay. my money on the Vikings. You would be. All right, well, oh, uh, I'll take the Packers. I hope you're right. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I'm worried. I'm, I'm, I think the magic of Lambeau Field is going to kick into it tomorrow. All right, I'll play you for coach. All right, well, Stuart, thanks a lot for being our guest. No problem. Mike, you guys have a good weekend and enjoy the football. Mike Patterson, thank you for being part of this too. Big part as always. See you next week. Yeah, you, you have a good uh, bowl day today, and uh, don't don't overdose on the uh, turkey or whatever you're eating. And say hello <laughs> to. I'll do, I'll do the same. Thank you for listening to Chab Dog Sports Talk. AM 1050, FM 106.5. We'll be back next week with more sports talk.
This is 1050 AM KCAA Loma Linda and 106.5 FM Yukaipa. Your NBC Sports Radio update starts now. Bowl season continues. I am Keith Irizarry in the Tax Slayer Bowl. Penn State trails Georgia 17 to 3. Just about 12 minutes to go in the third. The bigger story, junior Nittany Lion QB Christian Hackenberg left with a right shoulder injury in the second quarter. And Penn State has since announced he will not return. Trace McSorley has taken his place. He is two of three in the air for four yards. Liberty Bowl, you'll see Kansas State and Arkansas at 320.